Dominica remembers the late Prime Minister Pierre Charles 10 years after his passing. Government's Housing Loans Board seeks avenues for cheaper funding and government promises to continue priority programs in the new year. Thanks for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Pearl Fontaine. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others right after this. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agents. Thanks for staying with us. If you dwell only on negative things, then you will be living in a negative world. But if you dwell on positive things, then clearly that is what we'd be looking forward to. We'd be looking forward to positive things. And I'm a positive person. The late Honorable Pierre Charles is being remembered as having made a sterling contribution to the national development of Dominica. This as today, Monday, January 6, 2014, marks the 10th anniversary of his passing. The late Pierre Charles, former parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency, served as Prime Minister of Dominica from October 3, 2000 to January 6, 2004. Upon beginning his tenure as Prime Minister and later Minister for Finance, the late Pierre Charles inherited an ailing economy. He recognized the need to re-engineer the public sector and made the difficult decision to undertake structural adjustments. He gained the confidence of international financial institutions and governments around the world. This resulted in concessionary financing and debt restructuring for Dominica, rescuing the country from financial crisis. The late Pierre Charles is remembered by his wife, Honorable Justina Charles, Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, his three children, other members of his family, members and supporters of the Dominica Labour Party, the people of the Grand Bay constituency and the people of Dominica. Meantime, Acting Prime Minister Honorable Reginald Austrie has described the late Prime Minister Pierre Charles as a man who will be remembered for his tremendous work in steering Dominica to economic prosperity amidst global economic challenges in the early 2000s. In fact, all the benefits that this government and the people of Dominica are now reaping are from the sacrifices made by Pierre Charles. You may recall that the stabilization program that we started somewhere in 2003 was in fact orchestrated by Pierre Charles. And we had to take those tight measures and remember those days when we had to reduce uh, 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 public officer salary, we introduced the, the, the stabilization levy, and we had to tr seriously cut down on public expenditure. Very, very unpopular move at the time. And some of us believe that it was the criticisms that he received over that period that really hastened his passing. But today we can say that we're really reaping the benefits of the hard work and the contribution made by Pierre Charles. The acting Prime Minister believes the decisive action of the late Dominica leader made it possible to develop a number of safety measures and re-establish Dominica's credibility in the eyes of the international community. We were able to restore credibility in the international financial community. We were able to pay out some of the debts that we inherited when we got in, in, into government, especially to the local private sector. We were able to recommit ourselves 
to pay our know, contributions or workers' contributions to the social security that were not being paid before we got into office. And we were able to stabilize the finances of this country. And what did, that did for us was to allow us to receive concessionary uh, loans and grants from these financial institutions. We were able to develop a number of safety net measures, which took several forms and different forms, and which continues even up to this time. So all programs like the Housing Revolution, the Yes We Care program, and the schools transfer grant, uh, the payment of, of, of school books and, and, and bus fares for school children, all these are a, as a result of the sacrifices that PHRs made. Honorable Austri said the Dominica Labour Party administration, under the leadership of Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, walks a path previously laid by the late Prime Minister Pierre Charles. Today, we are experiencing some growth in our economy, stabilization of our finances, and all of this really is as a result of the early contributions, the early sacrifices made by Pierre Charles as Prime Minister. And so I believe that his memory should remain a permanent fixture in the minds of the people of Dominica, especially those of us who are benefiting, whether it's through education, through the number of grants. So the Dominican Labour Party under Roosevelt Skerritt is really walking on the path that was laid by Pierre Charles during his political lifetime. In related news, the Pierre Charles Foundation and the Friends of Pierre Charles are paying tribute to the memory of the deceased. A release from the foundation reads, quote, It is our duty and obligation to honor the memory of the late Prime Minister, who during his lifetime worked tirelessly for the education of the masses of Dominicans, cultural development, socio-economic development of Dominica, and solidarity with struggles for national liberation, especially on the African continent, end of quote. The release continues that the contribution of Pierre Charles to Dominica must be viewed from a broad perspective given his involvement in many endeavors. The release states that his contribution to political development in Dominica was only a part of his larger contribution to his homeland. Pierre, a man of great humility, was quintessentially a servant of the community throughout his life. The release states that in his teenage years he was an acolyte, a scout, and a cadet. In his adult years, he was a teacher, a youth leader, a political activist, a farmer, a parliamentarian, a sportsman, a musician, a businessman, a minister of government, and finally, a prime minister. The foundation describes the late Pierre Charles as a dynamic and visionary individual who demonstrated unwavering commitment to the upliftment of the masses of Dominicans. On an international level, the release states, he was a messenger of peace who placed great importance on development and poverty alleviation as the foundation for transformation of the developing countries. During his tenure as Prime Minister, he laid the basis for the re-engineering of the economic structure of Dominica, pursued a progressive foreign policy which built enduring partnerships with other countries which continue to serve Dominica. The release says that Pierre Charles stood steadfastly for transparency and good governance as evidenced by the Integrity in Public Office Act which he championed and promoted a vision of energy security for Dominica. Pierre Charles will be remembered for his commitment to self-help and grassroots development, advancement of the Grand Bay District, civil society development, good governance, integrity, and the principle of self-determination all over the world, including Mozambique, Angola, Zimbabwe, and Namibia. He promoted the inclusion of Cuba as an important member of the Caribbean family of nations. On that note, we have with us one friend of Pierre Charles, Mr. Ed Regis. Welcome to our National Focus News Desk. Yes, thank you very much and good evening. Good evening to all of your listeners too. It's a pleasure to have you here, um, especially since we know that you're about to share some interesting information. For many of us, um, we did not know Pierre Charles personally, and so you might be the only representation that we have. Maybe here on GIS, but I'm sure a number of Dominicans remember Pierre Charles quite fondly. I agree. Yeah. And you knew him personally. Can you tell us what kind of person he was, at least to you? Oh, yes. Um, Pierre Charles was, was one of my mentors, absolutely, growing up. Um, you knew him being involved in almost everything in the community. He was a church man, he was a family man, he was involved in business, 
Um, he was a scout, he was a musician, he was a farmer, and he was a teacher. Um, so um, we knew Pierre Charles as, as, as a man who was just very involved in almost everything um, in Grand Bay, and he emerged as a leader almost naturally. And when he became a politician, he was able to galvanize a lot of support in Grand Bay because everybody was able to identify with him. Pierre Charles was maybe the one who, who um, suffered a bit because uh, we had to implement the austerity measures. Right. And, and so this was not very easy for him. I remember that he used to say, man, what are we really going to do with, with the economy? It was something that, that created a lot of pressure for him and um, something I think which led him to make the ultimate sacrifice. We continue to tread along and to hope that his legacy continues to reign in our hearts and in our minds and, and that we can chronicle for, for generations to come, we can chronicle what he achieved. Because many people believe that because he spent three years as Prime Minister, that was all that Piero was. Piero was a lot more than that. Um, and long before he was Prime Minister, he had a great legacy. Pierre Charles was an outstanding son of Dominica whose legacy will live on. May his memory be forever etched in the annals of Dominica's history. In more news, the Government Housing Loans Board is on a mission to obtain cheaper funding to lend to public officers at a lower interest rate. The board meets every year to review its activities and forge a way forward. According to Chairman of the Board, Felix Thomas, Discussions held at the last meeting focused on making housing even more affordable to public officers. At that function, we exposed our intention to seek a new source or cheaper source of funding to lend to public officers at a lower interest rate of no more than 5% on their reducing balance. We borrow from financial institutions, and in order for us to do that, we would have to borrow at um, rates that are affordable, uh, that are conducive for unlending to the type of reduced rates that we are looking at. So that will be one of our main activity for this new calendar year. The Government Housing Loans Board is the main source of funding for the construction of homes for public officers. This initiative falls directly into the plan of the current administration to make housing affordable for all Dominicans. Although the board has existed for a number of years, Thomas stressed that activities intensified from 2000. Over the years, we have seen growth in our capital yield because, I mean, where the, the institution have been existing let's say for well over 54 years now. But it, it became the giant of an organization that it is now from 2000 when this new administration came in. And um, we decided to pump a lot of um, new funds into the, into the um, institution that could benefit many public officers. Since 2000, over 1,600 loans have been processed. In 2012, 180 loans totaling $11.8 million were granted. And in 2013, 29 loans totaling $5 million were dispersed. Thomas says at this time things are looking up and very soon public officers can look to benefit from interest rates 5% or lower. Thomas also informed that existing borrowers will also benefit from the reduced rate when it comes into effect. Through our studies over the years, um, every public officer, even those in the upper income bracket, have also, you know, financial challenges. And that is why we are trying to have an across-the-board reduction in interest rate to no more than 5% that will benefit all public officers. In other news, Acting Prime Minister Honorable Reginald Austri says government will consider looking into legislative deterrence for persons whose environmental negligence worsens disaster situations. Honorable Austri made the statement at an end of year press conference following the Christmas Eve trough system disaster, which caused widespread flooding and damage, especially in the south of the city. According to the minister, assessments indicate human negligence as a key aggravating factor. One of the things that came out very clearly was the environmental impact or the environmental, yes, the environmental conditions 
that lead to those situations. Because like in, in, in the Newton Castle Comfort um, area, and, uh, we have been told that there are two developments that, that sort of uh, made the situation worse. There's a private development there, and there's also the felling of, of, of trees by, by a particular developer, and those trees and trunks were left in the river along the water course. And so when the rivers came down, uh, it was blocked. The water was blocked, and so the water had to find its own way out. And that, that itself um, was responsible for quite a bit um, of, the, of the damage that was suffered. Minister Austry said further that the extensive damage caused by the trough system means that government will proactively seek ways of mitigating further disasters, especially from the effects of climate change. One of those ways, he says, may be judicial. The government will seek to take the necessary action um, in terms of mitigating um, against those occurrences where you have man-made situations uh, resulting in millions and millions of damage to the state. And it cannot be fair to the state that men go about their business, doing their private business, do not take care uh, of, 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 what, of, of, of the environment and to dump stuff in the rivers or along the river courses and cause us every time to be suffering great loss and inconvenience. And thank God that there were no, no loss of lives. But that is what could have happened like in St. Lucia and Vincent. And these would be problems created or, or, or made worse by man-made activity. So we have to put measures in place to ensure that we keep our waterways cleared, we keep our rivers and our ravines cleared. And if it means that we have to review the legislation concerning those activities, then we'd have no choice but to review the legislation or to put legislation in place to mitigate against um, those occurrences. Preliminary reports estimate a $45 million cleanup bill for the Christmas Eve trough system. In other news, government has indicated that in addition to the numerous new projects to be undertaken in 2014, the established top priority ones will continue in the new year. Specifically mentioned by the Acting Prime Minister, Honorable Reginald Austry, was the geothermal energy project currently in advanced stages in the Roseau Valley. We have stated several times the importance of that particular project to the social and economic development of Dominica where we seek to uh, bring down the cost of energy, reduce the cost of energy and electricity uh, by providing geothermal um, energy to Dominica. Government hopes that the project can be accelerated this year to bring financial relief to consumers as soon as possible. The elderly can take comfort that they will not be left behind this year since government has every intention to continue the popular Yes We Care program. Honorable Austrian in his comments on the SV Care program communicated his satisfaction that the opposition has come on board to recognize the need for the program. It was happening uh, when we heard from the opposition that after their 21, um, 21 and 25 days idling across the country, that they too recognize that there are persons in this country who are in fact in need of the Yes We Care program. In fact, it was a member for Salisbury who said that he met Tuplin Marigot and they really are deserving of some assistance. And also um, Joshua Francis, who noted that he, he walked around Newton and there in fact homes in Newton that need assistance. And don't forget, those two programs were heavily criticized by the United Workers Party opposition. And it's a clear indication that they knew nothing about Dominica. They had not been to the country and so I'm very happy that they took a tour and they, they, they were like tourists driving around and to see some of the efforts that government is making to bring relief to those people. Though they insist on calling them greedy people, but they themselves are admitting that there is need and um, the hundred and whatever number of persons we have under those programs were in fact needy people, but they are now coming to their senses that these people do need assistance and we're hoping that they will publicly say that they support the Yes We Care and the housing program and retract this statement about calling poor needy people greedy people. Honorable Austri says he awaits a public statement of support from the opposition. And the International Labour Organization has issued a statement promoting sports as a way of improving youth employment and employability. According to Matthew Koniak, youth employment specialist in the ILO, employers usually seek hardworking, disciplined team players who are energetic and results driven. Koniak says these qualities are known as soft skills, which are common expectations from the world of work. These skills are also found in another world that is very popular among young people, sports. He believes youth are often passed over for jobs for their apparent lack of soft skills, 
rather than their lack of experience. The International Labour Organization endorses programs which teach those skills, specifically the Agana program, which operates in Latin America and is quite productive in Dominica. The ILO has long advocated for sports development and youth employment by supporting programs for youth sports and peace. At a recent youth and sports conference which took place in the Pacific last month, it was concluded that a link exists between productive, employable youth and sports. According to a statement from the ILO, sport serves a variety of purposes. It can be used to, quote, tackle non-communicable diseases and improve mental health, foster social inclusion, but can also help to prevent antisocial behavior. Sports can help promote school attendance, develop a range of life skills, and encourage active citizenship, end of quote. Dominica's government has long realized the importance of sports in youth development and continues to invest in sporting facilities and sports education for the island's youth. And that's it for the English segment of the news. Find out why bars of soap may not be best for public places. Coming up next in your tip of the day. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Did you know that liquid soap is best for public places? There are many reasons why bar soap can be a problem. Bar soap can sit in pools of water and become contaminated with harmful germs and may be more harmful than not washing your hands. Bar soap can also dry out and develop cracks, which can harbor dirt and germs. Liquid soap, on the other hand, is less likely to be contaminated and is easier to use with less wastage. It's fine to use bar soap at home, but liquid is best for public places. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Pearl Fontaine. Thank you for watching.